Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to be diving into a bit of recon in the virtual world. I've written out here um, what, I, what I'd like to talk about. So yeah, let's get into it. I've had this reoccurring feeling in the spirit that things are rapidly changing in our world. The, the decline has begun. This is quite obvious when you look at the worldwide events on a daily basis. But what about the worlds within our world? Not just the internet, but the areas in where people are now engaging on a daily basis, such as the virtual world. Thing is, if we look forward at what I will say has been planned for a very, very long time, then we shall see the truth that this new virtual world being created has been cultivated, encouraged and designed in a way where the average person can get lost for hours at a time. Take a look around at your grandparents, for example. They all have mobile phones now. They are swiping, shopping, online, making video calls, and likely found in your comment section, much to your disdain, on Facebook. So what happened? Imagine a plan that was drafted up centuries ago before the formation of many countries, where it was known decades ahead of time what technologies will be released when and by who. All that it took to develop these technologies was a little influence, outside influence here and there. A new microprocessor here, a new type of silicon there, a new interface here, a new way to interact there. Before you know it, these technologies long planned eventuate into existence. Humans think they're being released by some great new innovative discovery when in fact nearly all of our technology was given to humans through the guise of deception, through the guise of demonic and spiritual principalities that seek the destruction of man. If you've ever read the book of Enoch, it elaborates on the fallen angels that were cast down, that saw that the, woman, the women and men were fair. It also mentions this in Genesis, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took their wives of all which they chose. The angels showed them how to forge, how to showed the sons of men how to forge iron for swords, how to use plants and medicines, and then we see makeup used in Egypt to seduce men using their eyes. These are just some of the examples. We see the handing over of technology here. They all banded together in their lusts and their pride, these angels. They themselves were truly deceived, for they set themselves up to face the wrath of God. My point here, nobody is beyond reproach with God. Evil is evil. God is just and true. He is the truth. We see in Ecclesiastes 1-9, to The thing that hath, hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is nothing, no new thing under the sun. And this scripture can be applied to so many things. Um, but we see that these cycles repeat. So as we see, the evil men that now communicate with these cast down spiritual entities, they are given the keys to be able to build these technologies, to manifest them. And it is clear that ultimately, while they can be used in some ways for good, they are inherently, at the very core, the product of evil. Now, I just want to show you something. So this is the latest headset, if it doesn't, doesn't cut it out. So this is the latest headset from Meta, okay? These are, you know, very, very, very expensive, um, crazy technology. You know, it basically tracks your face, your eyes, um, your, gest your uh, emotions, your expressions, um, your hands uh, attract if you put down the controllers, you pick up the controllers, you know, you've got your, your, your that it can emulate your hands. Um, and so we're seeing biometrics like a priority in these devices. You know, it's always, um, you know, it's always coming from the perspective of, oh, we can make your avatar, you know, more realistic and this and that. And yeah, and while it does, um, it's also, well, what happens to all that data? Where's it going? So, um, I wholeheartedly believe that virtual and augmented reality and technologies that are coupled together into a somewhat metaverse 
will be the virtual prison of the beast system, the playground that Satan has complete control and dominance over. For those that are plugged into the system, they will become highly addicted to it. It will be the way people in the future socialize because they are pinned down with climate control. Climate control, lucky car. And travel is reserved for those with the social standing and the means to afford it. Your carbon offset will be the new currency that they intend to limit your movements with. 15 minute cities, so nobody needs to go far. People will prefer to engage synthetically rather than in person because it is less awkward. I say this as this is their plan, but it does not mean necessarily mean all of this will come to pass. It is all hinging on God, our Abba Father and his judgments and how scripture plays out and becomes fulfilled. And we have to remember the gospel must, must be preached to the ends of the earth. Okay. So Matthew twenty four fourteen. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It's also worth mentioning several days ago, the 2D game Roblox that has 230 million users announced full VR support and will be, re will be released initially in the Metastore for free in the coming weeks. This game alone will cause an explosion of young people to beg their parents for headsets to play this game. The thing is, most parents have no idea on how any of the VR technology works and will more than likely give in. Many teens also earn their own money from 14 in Australia anyway, and these headsets are only a few hundred dollars, so you'll see many of them working and buying their own as well. This intermingling of adults in VR and children and teenagers also has some serious ramifications for child protection that are pretty obvious as well. I mean, people can create rooms with their own rules and, you know, they can, they can create private spaces and, yeah, it's, it's, it really is like, it, it really can be, if not, not checked, like the dark web, but, you know, in a virtual world, which is, you know, gives people access to so many more things. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's really, it's so much, it's so much more dangerous because you can have an avatar friend. Okay. Let's, let's just say he's dressed up as a, a, a cartoon character and he talks to you for weeks and weeks, but he's there and he meets you at this certain location at this time. Okay. It's more engaging for young people than it is for chatting in a 2D box. Okay. So there's a lot of nastiness that can happen. It's really, it's quite scary. I mean, I don't let my children play VR. They're too young, but I, even still, I will not, I'll keep them away from it. Today I woke and had this need to do some reconnaissance in the social side of virtual reality. After all, this is what a future would look like in the B system. The purpose of this is to develop a deep understanding and look at the types of people that are in these experiences and understand not only intentions but how I may be able to reach them to share the good news. I learned today it is not just walking around with a megaphone and banners like in real life but it will take a serious amount of understanding to reach out as everyone is so distracted in these worlds. It is like the busyness of a bee. People do not stay still for too long. They are racing around and in some rooms playing in others hanging out. I went to McDonald's and ordered a cheeseburger with a virtual credit card. Several people in there were actually very nice to me. They were role playing and basically running it like a business. I can barely hear myself. Oh, yeah. Over here, you also want some food. How do you like it? What would you like? Oh, hey, could I please get a cheeseburger? Hello. Hello, can I get a cheeseburger? Thank you. How do you look at this? How do you look at this? Can I drive? Hi, Here you go. Thank you. Well, wow, that's a very big cheeseburger. No, I died. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Yeah? Hey. Have a nice day. Whatever. It was actually very creative to watch. It saddens me that there are many teenagers and younger in these spaces already. So parents are just giving these headsets to kids. 
The majority of users on this platform I am using here called Rec Room, one of the largest and more polished communities, are teenagers and younger kids. I didn't talk to many, but I just observed and tried to get a feel for how they're using this technology. I found, also found an LGBTQ hangout space and went in several times to try and find someone off to the side to chat with, but they're all very busy engaging in private conversations. And I'll um, see if I can talk to someone. Thank you. I'm going to spend a fair bit of time designing this. It's looking pretty empty at the moment. There's not many people here. I think I'll spend more time here and try to chat and see how these spaces are mainly being used and how many frequent here. I'm hoping to build up to preaching the gospel, but through the approach of using love and understanding, rather than coming in guns blazing and being forceful on the topic. I've learned through working in many schools through my career that youth seem to react better to you when you listen to them and attempt to understand their perspective. So I will experiment more with how I approach this and how... I will approach preaching the gospel in VR. After jumping out of the LGBTQ experience, I felt inclined and opened my Bible and ended up on Ezekiel 9, the mark of the righteous, and Psalm 5, God abhors wickedness. These are very telling scriptures. Now, I won't read them in their entirety here. I'll, I'll just read Psalm 5 quickly. Um, so, 
if we go to spare with me, just go to Psalm 5. What's going on with my keyboard? Here we go. All right, to the chief musician upon Nehiloth of Psalm of David, give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee I will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. But thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship towards thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before thy face, for my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. The inward part is very wickedness. The throat is an open sepulchre. Sepulcher, they they flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favour will thou compass him, as with a shield. Oh, look, let's have a quick look at Ezekiel as well, hey? He also, he cried also in mine ears with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth towards the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar and the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man who, upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And I won't read the rest, but at some, um, you know, if you don't, don't have the mark of the righteous, you would have been killed. Um, so after jumping out of the LGBTQ experience, I felt inclined to open my Bible and I ended up on those, right? So um, there was also, I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, I also played some paintball and got shot several times and found myself in a bugged out nightclub where I could tell right away the vibe wasn't very friendly. I also ended up in a lobby area where I heard a young teen bragging how his father was cremated and one of his friends said he could snort his dad's ashes. These are really sad comments from a young man that clearly was under no supervision while playing this game. I wonder what his mother or guardian would have thought about these comments. My dad it got cremated. I can now technically smoke him and that's amazing. Ow, you can oh. smoke him or snort him. What? I could snort him, yeah. I know as teenagers we do and say stupid things, but in these virtual worlds, this behavior will just be encouraged. As so much power is given to the youth to live and define the rules on their own terms in these places, it is actually really scary to think about it. Yeah, I was really just grossed out by these comments that he would say that. I didn't, I didn't say anything. I was standing behind them and they were all laughing. Um, you know, I just, I really... Uh, part of me wanted to step forward and just say, you know, how dare you? And the other part of me just went, look, you know, I can't be the police in here. Um, I need to, you know, I'm here to do some recon. Um, I'll continue to explore other platforms, perhaps focusing on more mature age users and see how I go. I expect a lot of rejection and I know that the gospel 
and learning about the Bible and God might be far from their minds, but we have to try. Even if it results in failure, we move on and try again. My initial thoughts, though, it's, is this seems like a really great way, great way to practice preaching the gospel without ever leaving home. I realize this technology is inherently evil, and I have mixed feelings about this. But as it keeps popping up in my spirit, I've asked Abba many times if this is his will. And until I hear back, I consider this an experiment and let us see how it unfolds. unfolds. Who knows, I might even try a live stream of this once I get everything ironed out. We'll see. I'd love if anyone has any suggestions here, anything they want me to try. I've considered building my own hangout space, but I figured that it might be better off roaming through spaces um, people have made as they already have decent attendance. And I don't have the time to just be in there all the time. I don't want to either. I pray this gives you more understanding of other mediums that we might reach people on. Just ensure you pray on this before going out and doing this. Let us be clear, I'm not encouraging virtuality, but I'm certainly, I certainly see there are millions of people that are in these experiences and clearly they are not focused on God right now. All right, so I hope that this has just opened your eyes to, you know, we, we're all familiar that these things are going on, but when we see it, you know, in front of us and we get more of a perspective on it, we can actually understand why people are going in here and, and how it's different from normal social media. It's a completely different platform and a completely different paradigm. And therefore, it, it might require a completely different approach to, you know, how, um, how these things are done. So I've seen people run like virtual churches and other things in VR um, just to try and encourage the word. Um, but I don't know what the doctrine was like that they was, you know, they were speaking. So, but I, I suspect that, you know, this might be something that, you know, is, has become a task for me. Um, we shall see. And um, I'll continue to explore this, this area as I'm led. Um, you know, I'm not doing anything unless I feel the need to in my spirit. All right. God bless you guys. Love you very much. And I'll uh, talk to you later. Maranatha.